we wanted a garden that didn't need much maintenance, so we made sure that um, we've got lots of bark chipping um, and sh shrubs and hedges can take a bit of a pounding from students from time to time. Um, talking about sustainable agriculture and sort of planting more uh, native trees and species around your farms, and then we identified that there wasn't that many native trees on the school block. So what we've done is we've taken our year groups and each year group is going to be responsible for a garden space um, and they're going to be planting them out with some native plants, so shrubs and lower sort of plants. And it is fantastic when it's done. Um, the kids actually take a bit of ownership on the garden, so I, that's one of the one of the focuses I had was getting kids to really take some ownership of that space and it, it, that, that side of it really works, so that's been fantastic. Oh, well, about the project, uh, we got to get out of the classrooms and get into like helping fix up the school and hopefully we can keep doing it around other places. We've been working on this garden here, we've got some pre-existing um, grevilleas and some wattle trees and we've planted some lamandras and more grevilleas in this area. We've also put a few ramblers around the place. We've also spread bark chip around the area to kill all the weeds and we've um, made sure we've only used native plants because native plants will bring in most of native bees and birds and all other species and they are also climatised to this area so that the climate they'll be able to handle it and they can be there for many years. This is a lily pilly and we have been propagating some of them by just using the fruit, peeling off the outside like a bird or other animal would, and then disinfecting the seed, which um, gets rid of any fungus or disease, and then planting it um, to create more to plant around the school. Take a lily pilly, when you peel off all the fruity bits on the outside, you put the seed in after you've disinfected it and everything, and you put it in and it grows. This is a nesting hollow camera and it's a stick and there's a camera on the end and it's used to put in the hollow boxes so that you can safely see if there's any birds in it or not. We also use it to check if there's mice or um, blue miner eggs in there so we can... Or any feral um, or there's any stuff. feral animals in there so we can get them out safely so the native birds can come back. It's safer to use the ladders because if you make too much noise with the ladder, you could easily scare the birds away. And with the camera, you can look at it from a safe distance without making too much noise with the pole and the camera bit. Because trees take 100 years to hollow out and it become, they become really um, fragile and they drop limbs, which is really unsafe for the school, so they have to cut them down. So having hollow nesting boxes allows the birds to still live out in the hollow trees. So we got about 90 trees from the Port Macquarie Koala Hospital. Um, they donated them to the school and we've been planting them down by the uh, water line down there to hold together the banks and hopefully make home for insects and animals and maybe even koalas. So far I think that a lot of the practical work um, is a lot of everyone's favourite but it's a lot of mine as well. Um, I do live on a farm so a lot of practical stuff is heaps of fun even if it's at school. Um, I enjoyed a lot of the planting and um, being able to watch our plants uh, grow essentially and um, like look back and think and see that that's what we planted from a tiny little seed.